We're going to discuss a new concept called momentum. Momentum is often denoted with a, a letter P, and it's a vector. So the vector P is defined in physics as mass of an object times its velocity V. And since V is a vector, mass is a scalar, this quantity P is a vector. This is another example of a term which might have a lot of meaning in everyday speech, but we're going to have to do our best to develop an expertise around the physics definition of momentum. We use momentum in everyday speech in phrases like a certain project is gaining momentum or we're losing momentum, but in our present context um, we're going to have to just work very hard to develop this, this intuition around momentum is mass times velocity. Happily, in physics, there's also this sense that momentum implies a motion. In the MKS unit system, the units for momentum is kilograms meters per second. So this is a derived unit in terms of the base units, kilograms, meters, and seconds. Momentum is important in a lot of problem-solving situations, and it's not really anything new in the sense that we will simply reformulate Newton's second law, and we will do it using momentum. Newton's second law states that force, or net force, is mass times acceleration. And since acceleration is a vector, force is a vector as well. We can also write acceleration as the derivative or change in velocity with respect to time. So if we write mass times dv dt, that's also equal to net force according to Newton's second law. Until now, we have said that a net force is necessary in order to cause a change in the velocity vector. If we see a delta v that is zero, that implies that there's no net force. Or stated another way, if the velocity at a later time is equal to the velocity at some initial time, that signifies no net force. In terms of momentum, we may rewrite Newton's second law as force equals the derivative of momentum with respect to time. Since the mass in the momentum is just a scalar, it pulls out of the derivative, and mass times dv dt is just equivalent to dp dt. We can again come up with a, a sense of constancy when there's no net force. In this case, when there's no net force, we'll say that this momentum vector is a constant, or delta p is zero, instead of saying delta v is zero. So now we have a new idea of a conservation law. Whenever there's a net force of zero, this momentum P will be a conserved quantity. When we deal with a system of particles, the net force referred to in Newton's second law is the net external force acting on the system. In other words, we will not concern ourselves with any forces that might be acting internally between the particles in a system. So if I envision a collision between a pair of particles, one with momentum P1 and another with momentum P2, and for time t less than zero, they're approaching one another. At time t equals zero, they interact in some fashion. And for times greater than zero, they are recoiling off in some direction. Then all of the, this, uh, what has just transpired, represents the internal interactions within a system. There may be many of these interactions going on, but as long as the system is not being acted upon by a net force from the outside, we expect that the total momentum of the particles will be unchanged. So another way to think about this is if we can envision a box that is drawn around the system, just take a pen and a dotted line, if we look across the boundaries of that box and the external forces which are there exactly cancel, or if there are no external forces entering the box, then this is what we this is the kind of situation we expect where there are no net external forces. In this case, the net force from external sources is zero, and therefore we expect that to equal the change in momentum with respect to time, or in other words, momentum will be a constant. If momentum is a constant, it's useful to know what it is. For a system of particles, the total momentum is equal to the vector sum of the first momentum, the, part, the momentum of the first particle plus the momentum of the second particle, and so on, for as many particles as there are in the system. And we expect that this momentum vector will be a constant over time because of Newton's second law. 
For a two-particle system, we may write down a conservation law, much like we did with energy, and write down that if we could measure the total momentum for the system at some initial time and do so again at some later or final time, that the total momentum will be the same. In equation form, this would be P1 initial plus P2 initial equals P1 final plus P2 final, where each of these terms is a vector.